Welcome to CSI Coatesville. Today we're going to focus on Forensic Lab Services. In this segment, we're going to define forensic science terms, describe a forensic scientist, explain the growth of forensic sciences, and explain the variety and organization of lab services. What is forensic science? It's the study and application of science to matters of law. In other words, we're using science to catch bad guys. Now, you may see this term criminalistics, and it's basically a synonym of forensic science. There has been a rapid growth of forensic science over the past 20 years. Now, that's not to say that forensic science hasn't been around for a long time. In fact, uh, it's an ancient science. We could go back to 700 AD in ancient China where they actually used fingerprints on documents and clay sculptures. Part of what's led to the explosion of forensic sciences was the discovery of the structure of DNA in the early 1960s. But also there's been a rapidly expanding uh, analytical tools of science as well, which has made a tremendous explosion in the tools that we can bring to bear on questions of law. In fact, the Boston Globe recently reported that forensic sciences are among the top 10 expanding fields of employment in the United States. Why is that? Now, what is a forensic scientist? First, they're highly trained in their area of expertise. They also work on specialized teams of professionals. They examine physical evidence, typically those that are collected at a crime scene. They are recognized by courts as an expert witness. In other words, they're able to provide expert testimony in court proceedings. Now, what are some specialties in forensic science? ballistics, which is the analysis of firearms and projectiles, paleontology, the study of mold spore, odontology, which is the study and analysis of bite marks and teeth, pathology, we study tissue samples from human beings as well as determine the cause of death of an individual. Entomology is the study of insects. This may surprise you, but we use the understanding the life cycle of insects in order to determine time of death of a decedent by the insects that are growing on the decedent's body. Toxicology is the study of poisons. Poisons have been used as a weapon, a means of killing someone in the past, and yet there's a growing use of toxicology in studying the environment to find and bring to justice those who are polluting the environment. Document and electronic media is also a very important part of forensic science. Many crimes include the use of documents, and of course this is rapidly growing uh, in the area of cybercrime. Many of you have seen DNA analysis on crime shows and that where we can identify fluids from a person's body as well as body tissues from the DNA that they leave behind. Biology is a much broader area of forensic science services. As you would expect, another important area in forensic science is fingerprinting, where we can identify a person by the prints that they leave behind on surfaces. Anthropology is a very important area when uh, a decedent has been deceased for a long time and all that remains is the skeleton. So we study and analyze the skeleton in order to find out background information on the person, including their age, their gender, their racial background, and something of the circumstances concerning their, their death. Drugs is also a huge area of forensic analysis with the proliferation of the use of illicit drugs. Hair and fiber evidence are often found at crime scenes that involve some sort of violent episode. Serology is the study of blood and other bodily fluids. We can use that to make an identification of a person. And voice print analysis is a recent science that's developed 
as cell phone conversations are analyzed to determine who is speaking. Below you have a picture of a typical chemistry lab that would be in a forensic science lab. Now we've just seen some of the services that are provided by forensic labs. Where are they located? Well, we find them in local law enforcement agencies, although most of these are relatively limited in the kind of services that they provide. Large cities, however, can have their own forensic science labs. Uh, in our area, Philadelphia police have their own crime lab that I visited before, and it's a four-story building that's rather large. State police labs are also located throughout the state in Pennsylvania and provide a broad array of services to both the state police themselves and to local law enforcement. There's also private labs that have experienced rapid growth when you think of the number of businesses that now require drug screening as a condition of their employment. These also play an important role. State universities provide very specialized services particularly for municipalities that lack the expertise that they need in answering certain kinds of questions. Not only at the local and state level are forensic services provided, but also at the federal level. For example, we're all familiar with the Federal Bureau of Investigation, where just about any type of forensic science you can think of is, is offered through their labs, and they are located throughout the United States. The most important one that we'll see later is in Washington, D.C. Alcohol, tobacco, and firearms is another federal law enforcement agency that focuses on the sale and distribution of illegal weapons as well as bombs. And they may get involved in local investigations that involve arson and, of course, bootlegging alcohol. The Secret Service not only provides security for our head of state and other important federal officials, but they are also charged with the securing currency of the United States, which is going to include counterfeiting. The Drug Enforcement Agency focuses specifically upon the sale and distribution of illicit drugs. Believe it or not, the United States Postal Service also has their own forensic labs because the mail can often be involved in illegal crime, trafficking of contraband, as well as the distribution of bioterrorism agents. And the United States Fish and Wildlife Services also have their own forensic lab because of the federal laws involving endangered species and poaching on federal land. And Homeland Security, which is charged with protecting the borders of our nation also has their own forensic labs. What you see below is the, the FBI building in Washington, D.C. Here are some questions for you to consider on your own. What kinds and level of training is a forensic scientist likely to have? What areas of forensic science offer the greatest employment opportunities? Is a forensic scientist a police officer or an officer of the court or none of these? And how is criminalistics different from criminology? Well, we've just gotten an introduction to forensic science and forensic lab services. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.